Winterfest. Winterfest. Get out of here. Winterfest North. No, we get North Winterfest. Winterfest. Winterfest North. A bunch of our anarchist friends. And uh um, with Tom associated with the freedom. The freedom! Freedom and worms. Worms. Drink ranch dressing. Oh. Yeah. You guys might remember Katie from episode four or five, I believe, or six, yeah. seven, seven, two, and three. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we are gathered up here for the um, third um, MPLC Winterfest, and I wanted to just gather up all the anarchists that came up here for a toast to freedom. Welcome to episode nine of the Anarchy Roundtable. This is a square table, Joe. Yeah, we're, gonna, <laughs> we're not. We're, it's actually going to be actually, the anarchy right. fireplace, fireside chat today. Since we are all generally Austrian economists, I would like to, you know, introduce you to a true Austrian, the first one I've ever actually had. <laughs> Could you give us a little talk about economy? Oh, they, they live German. No. German, yeah. Actually, give a Coleman. Could everybody crazy. introduce themselves real quick? Uh -huh. Starting there. That's gonna take a minute. David. Oh, yeah, no, Jason. Tracy. Jackson. Jason. Mary. Scott. Howard. Pippi. Wendy. <laughs> Mike. I'm Lou. Beth. Katie. David. And Joe. Woo! Woo! Yay! Are we free to go? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Am I being detained? You're being detained. You're being detained. <laughs> <laughs> cats, cats, cats. <laughs> We heard it, the cats. Anarchy oh, Roundtable, episode nine, take two. <laughs> episode nine, take two. You need two. to get one of those. <laughs> okay. They got it. Beth. Talk. <laughs> Talk. You guys are leaving. <laughs> Talk. Uh, so do you welcome. Have anything in particular you want to hear about? <laughs> so we want to welcome Scott and Beth and Lou from the Feed and Fiends. To the Anarchy Roundtable <laughs> at the um, <laughs> at the, at the um, Winterfest, the MPLC Winterfest, which is being hosted by Paul and Hello. his wife Lynn, um, and Sophie but, and Jackson, and Sophie and Jackson, Sophie the dog. Um, <laughs> Sophie's not a very good hit. Oh, she she bit. She's she bit. a biter. She, she does not like zombies. <laughs> yeah. She does not like that. She's pretty mellow. So She'll weird. dog most of the time. Just every once in a great while, she yeah. likes to get up on her hind legs and bite the crap out of so, <laughs> so I guess this is what the, are you gonna do? I guess this is the anarchy roundtable fireside <laughs> chat. Um, She's done version. just as I've trained her. Um, <laughs> so you guys are about to head out soon. So I want to yes. just um, talk to you guys a bit. Okay. Um, you have had a pretty um, good anarchy story, I would say. Pretty good anarchy story? Yeah. What does that mean? Well, you came to anarchy. How, How did you come to anarchy? Oh. And then where um, has it taken you? That's where I'm more interested in. Where actually. has it taken me? Okay. Yeah. I kind of, I guess I came to anarchy sort of like more, it didn't like, it wasn't like a new concept, but it finally clicked into my brain. It was like, oh, yeah, I've known that all along. I just didn't realize. Um, so that was probably, that was 2013. And then, where has it taken me? Um, when you met us all at the fest, that I was did. the first time it you was found the this. First, yeah, the first MPLC yeah. um, fest in Brighton. In Brighton. And it was then, nearby. And then yeah. you were there too. But you. There's strange noises. Nearby. You what? Scott. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to check the recording. Um, if you had been around be before then. Yeah. Um, you had been, how did you find us and how did you find anarchy? Two different questions. Well, in 2008, uh, my area where I live in Northeast Indiana fell on really hard times economically, like most places did. And, um, so a lot of people were wondering, you know, why, why is this and what's going to happen? And, um, I had always been sort of in the, conservative Republican camp. Um, I followed in the footsteps of my family, which was very right-leaning and very conservative Republican, free markets and all that, and, the, and high esteem for the military and law enforcement, maybe to a lesser extent. And so I was kind of in that camp, 
So I became interested in the Tea Party movement, and I was very constitutionally oriented. You know, when we go back to the Constitution and we get government out of all these other areas, it was obvious to me that things work better. You know, when there's more prosperity, and so I became involved with the Tea Party movement and actually chaired a small town Tea Party group for oh, a wow. period of about a year. And we, I went to the big march on Washington where there's several hundred thousand Tea Partiers were there, and I had my "Don't Tread on Me" T-shirt and all that. Nice. Did you wave the government's flag at him? Really <laughs> you know, I had a "Don't Tread on Me" flag. I wasn't actually oh, carrying the stars and stripes. Okay, so give me a oh, little cause, credit. Cause a little get, credit there for that. Get, when you get the the "Don't Tread on Me" shirt and then the "Tread on Me Please" flag. <laughs> 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 you better be nicer. I'm going to wave your flag really hard, and I'm going to pledge allegiance to you. Yes. So, all right. So anyway, uh, at the time, I was I mean, really just, curious, just, it's doing a lot of reading and looking around online. Uh, I began to talk, or began to listen to different podcasts and radio shows. This is in the Free Talk Live. It was one of the radio shows that I listened to. And... Uh, be a common thread here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Free talk live. Yeah. So, and I, w- I was reading all the writings of Thomas Jefferson, who seemed philosophically to be pretty liberty oriented, and just exploring all these different ideas. And I stumbled onto the Wikipedia for the non aggression principle and read through that and thought, well, this, you know, this sounds pretty sound. I don't think I could really argue against that. So, if we apply this principle, which seems to be sound, then uh, how does that apply to immigration? You know, what my stance is, my sort of right-leaning stance is on immigration. Well, that's not going to work, right? And, and how does it apply to taxation at all? You know, well, that's not going to work at all. So um, I just went that extra way to taking a principle that I already held, you know, and just applying it consistently. And it brought me pretty quickly to anarchy. So that's how I came to anarchy. Um, there was a number of us that, at that time that began to listen to the Complete Liberty podcast, Wes Bertrand's Complete Liberty podcast. And Wes Bertrand began talking about nonviolent communication in his podcast. And a number of us that were really interested in that um, began to get together online. And at first we would audio chat, and then we began doing Google Hangouts later on. Katie uh, was in one of those Google Hangouts, and I got to know her through that. And then finally we got together in person, and I knew her personally, and her and Danny Damon were kind of key players in getting the whole MPLC scene started. So I was there pretty much right from the start because I knew Katie. Oh, wow. Nice. Mm-hmm. And so, and that's how I'll basically all of this got started. Um, how about, as far how as did you, uh, what's the rest of your story, Beth? I didn't, you didn't get too far. <sighs> into, uh, well, how did you get into, uh, she came to the fest. How did you hear yeah. about the fest? And Oh, so it yeah. started off, I guess I kind of went more from the um, food freedom angle oh, yeah. and really st- and health freedom and really started looking into those. I mean, I, I was really interested in improving my diet and finding health and nutrition that way rather than going through the conventional medical world and traditional American diet was not making sense to me and just started eating more whole foods and feeling better and getting connected into that whole kind of like sort of an underground movement of, of food and health. So did you find that the state was getting in the way of your quest for a healthier diet? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I definitely felt like there was tons of these restrictions and, and why, like, um, the, the group that really like where I met James was his mom has this association. It's a health association, and it has to be an association, or we're not. You're not allowed to share health tips. It's against the law to share health tips unless you're an associate, a paid association. So mm-hmm. she's just like five bucks a year. We're an association. Oh, wow. we're, we're under the like, like sign this, please confirm that you're not an FBI so when agent. We were talking earlier like up, when we were talking earlier upstairs, we were breaking, breaking the law. Breaking the law. Yes. Oh, no. And la, so, la, la, la. so I, <laughs> I, I, start, I kind of like <laughs> started asking questions there and uh, kind of transitioning out of um, working in churches and in that whole religious world and asking really hard questions on that element. And so um, 
as I was going to these meetings, James was there, and James and I would sit around and chit-chat. There's it's a, a wide range of ages in this group, but um, there's only there's a token few younger people in there. And James and I were kind of the so you know I gravitated towards him. I'm like, who are you? What's your story? We started chit-chatting, and um, spent several hours, several months in a row after the meeting, standing outside chit-chatting, and so kind of just, he would start asking me hard questions, like James does, and kind of, we would talk in circles, and um, and he's like, hey, we're having this event, you should come, and so, and he's the like, the, 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 first first, Liberty Fest? the first Liberty Fest, he's like, it's in Brighton, you know, and I lived in Brighton at the time, like, yeah. that, that is home it's base really for me, convenient. so it really made sense, and I was like, oh, I love camping, I, I love this campground, like, this is exactly what I want to do, sure, James, I'll come hang out with friends and meet people, and sit around the fire and talk and go swimming. Too, right? and I was a little, yeah, I was a little intimidated. Um, but I was like, but heck, if it sucks, I can go home. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. 10 minutes from my bed, but even, or I can just go for a walk and get away from people. So like, I wasn't that nervous. It wasn't that intimidating to go. And so I just, I got there and I had met Tom and Anne at, <laughs> at, uh, um, we should explain why we're at Anne. Anne. <laughs> it's no, forever let, Anne. His name is Anne. Um, oh, James took me to a Livingston County Libertarian meeting. And so I had met Tom and Anne there. Um, and I, I was working at a produce store. And so our beef farmer, Ray, he was, he's also part of the Libertarian group. Totally not an anarchist, however. It's really interesting how we, yeah. and, and, and it's fun to have conversations with him. And he, he's just like, oh, you're not like James and Jeff, but you, you're still like, why are you pushing me on this? It's really interesting. Um, so I had met them. So I got to Liberty Fest and Tom was there already. And so I started hanging out with Tom and I spent the first day with him and Tra his brother Tracy and Robin oh, yeah, and Tracy. like some other, like met Mary and Jason right away. And, and just kind of like introduced myself and hung out and kind of checked things out and her ha like listened to some philosophical discussions, but really wasn't like hardcore into them. And I just kind of spent the weekend like, who are you? Tell me about yourself. Like, what do you think about this? Or And, and just kind of listening and hearing stories. And um, and then, yeah, like pretty much every day I kind of like floated between different people and spent a couple hours with people couple more hours with people and it was it was eye-opening it was a lot of information to take in and then just kind of started slowly processing that but felt a connection and a relief and a desire to better understand where I was at and what I what like to, to get some clarity from so, things so someone who's really into healthy food and working with that yeah you must talk to a lot of people, what do you say to 90% of the people you meet that think the government is there to protect you? What is your, your, your you final know, I would two say 90% of the people I meet do not yeah, think the I government guess. is taking care of them. Yeah, they don't not necessarily, have not necessarily come to the realization <laughs> that, that, they're that they're, yeah, <laughs> that they're actually pointing a gun at us, but, um, they're, is that an avenue you use though to get people to understand freedom? I, I'm more so in my conversations of really encouraging people to take responsibility for themselves, to do their own research, to, f to really understand and ask questions and to search. And like, you know, like uh, in my world in organic farming, GMOs, um, the, the regulations and the rules about organic foods and how much junk is being put into processed food. That's really the, the avenue, the, the area people, Focus come on. to me and ask questions and talk to me about. And so I'm always just like, hey, you know, some of the best tips are know where your food's coming from. Go out and talk to the farmers yourself. Don't assume that because it's in a box and this is what's labeled on it, that that's actually what's in it. Like, you need to, you need yeah. to know for yourself. And so I kind of just go with that self-responsibility, personal, personal care. Take care of yourself. You're, you're responsible for yourself one, avenue and one, let it go from there. One thing with me is I can... I have a really hard time sorting out the truth and diet and yeah. stuff like that because there's just so it's many, hard to sort out the truth you know, diet. people have such a invested interest or self-interest and they're selling something. Right. 
Whereas with libertarianism, small l libertarianism, anarchy, mm -hmm. philosophical, philo philosophical issues, I can just look within and I can say, yeah, that makes sense or that's not true. Yeah. I, I don't need to read studies and stuff. I can just right. see with my own logic that's true. It's really difficult for me to. I kind of. I would say I do that I the good same sense way with food, with food but too. It's like I mean, so much more. I know I don't have to do the study that I can go into the garden and I can pull the carrot out, I can wipe the dirt off, and I can eat it and be like, oh, this is what a carrot takes. Like, this this is how I want to acquire my food rather than going to a grocery store and biting into a carrot and being like, oh, I know this is good for me, but man, this doesn't taste very good. So I kind of I kind of go almost in the same way of like... <laughs> Using all my senses that's, to determine if the, so. That's great for that's you, good. and I think more people should do that, including myself. But with this many people on this planet, it's unlikely that everybody's going to be growing their own food. And this is a true. Lot of yeah. People don't have that option to really yeah take the time. But to it talk is to also, and, but it is possible to do more local food and to be like, okay, Mike, you may not want to grow your own food, but I would love to grow your food for you. And to be more focused yeah. on being like, yep. yes, <laughs> let's, let's, let's have that collaboration. Yeah. And I love the idea, too, of the agorism of that. You know, to be like, yeah. I want to grow food. This is a passion. This is a desire I have. Um, I don't want to deal with the government crap that goes through setting up the business and actually, like, Going, going in through all those hoops that I watch my boss and the farm that I work at go through, I'm like, oh, like, oh, there's got to be a better way to do this, you know? And so, yeah, the idea of if we can say, you know, you, you want to go out and talk about anarchy and philosophy and all that, and I would much rather grow food for people. So I kind of had a little bit of an epiphany while you were describing your path to anarchy. Yeah. I like to ask people the path to anarchy question because I know that everybody comes to anarchy through vastly different avenues. Like mm -hmm. I studied economics and noticed that the government was doing all of these things that were getting in the way of the economy. You were trying to grow food and discover the government was doing all of these things to get in the way of health. Mm -hmm. And I so. think that's really... Um, can you hit, just hit the red button on there? Um, it's really, there we go. Um, I think that is probably, at first I thought it was different for everyone because mm -hmm. you're talking about food and I read about economics and, um, I don't know what, um, free talk live, free talk live, with people on arguing Facebook. with people, um, what? <laughs> What, what it comes down to for everyone is they've noticed an area where the government is getting in the way of mm -hmm. people's yes. lives, and that frustration is what got them to look deeper right. into the topic. And I think if we're going to spread the philosophy of freedom, a good tool that we have is to get to know whoever it is we're talking to yeah. and find out the passionate area where the government is in the way of their life yeah. and talk to them about that. And Maybe. you're around people all the time who have the government big time in their life. Wow. Maybe as a... If you're a doctor, the government is all over your life. Yeah. Um, Maybe as a farmer, you can take an opportunity with those people that are asking those questions yeah. and, and just plant a little seed mm -hmm. to, to, to get, them, get them a little <laughs> bit farther <laughs> down the <laughs> But seriously, but are you suggesting that a little bit of freedom liberty. farming there? Yeah, freedom farming. <laughs> <laughs> Do a little freedom farming. Yeah. 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 It is, it is interesting and, to be uh, able to get into conversations with people and, and go No, with but them. I try to just throw something in there sometime. I did it last night, yesterday, a couple, few times to just ask people where are you at politically. <laughs> like it would probably be a really good Bitcoin? time to go and talk to people in Flint mm. about the government. Yeah. Because of the, um, yeah, with the, the water the, situation. Yeah, with the lead water situation. 
I mean, it's, it's, like, it's been a good time to go to talk to people in Flint for the last 20 years. Well, yeah, because the, the whole Flint... <laughs> because the whole Flint economy... Yeah. It's, Flint yeah. is actually worse than Detroit, um, but oh, smaller, yeah. so right. it makes less news. Mm-hmm. I, I think you'll find that their complaint is that they don't have the right people in charge and the plan's not being followed properly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. What we need you know, you, you do get that from right a lot leaders. of people, but I think all of the people who are anarchists... Um, we're able to get through that. Otherwise, people you are really all point zero two five percent. There is a sea change. Yeah, I feel it. It is know. spreading. Yeah. There's a sea change going on where people don't people don't automatically look at you as oh, are you a Republican or a Democrat? That, that's not the that's not the paradigm. There's a paradigm shift. Uh, I'm really seeing a paradigm yeah. shift all the way around, and not just. Not just anarchy, but no, but period, people, yeah. period, are starting to ask more questions and be like, wait, I know it's been this way for a long time, but I'm not sure that this is the way we should, you know, it should be happening. And with it's technology that bringing people, up police brutality more often, and you're seeing, you know, just you can read about things, and you don't just have yeah. to take Channel 2, 4, and 7's word for it, or yeah. you know, whatever. Right. Well, even yeah. those people who want... To vote because that's all they know how to do. The almost I don't know if it's the biggest yet or it's it's approaching. The biggest group of voters are independents. Well, I would encourage. I mean, if there's an activist out there that would change their name to nobody and run for president. <laughs> we may even be able to get the great Lou Fiend to vote for him. You mean the May nobody? I would vote for nobody. If I, I will actually vote in the next presidential election if, if somebody will change their name to nobody and run for president. <laughs> well, it, with, with that type of support, it sounds like I don't even need to vote for them. There you go. It's already, it's already taken I care. said probably. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Not going to happen. I think it's a good death. Yeah. It, I, I think Joe asked me Berman's a supreme. while back, says, if abolishing government was on the ballot, would you vote for it? And I says, yeah. if it made it on the ballot, we don't even need, to vote, for need it. to vote for it. it. It's already done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think if you ever get a critical mass of, I don't know what it is, 10%, 30% of people who just refuse to cooperate and support I, and fund government, I think it's going to it's gonna implode. One of the problems with that is they're going to refuse to cooperate with the Republican or Democrat. Because mo- most of the partisans... I'm saying refuse to cooperate with yeah, government, period. Yeah, I, I really don't think you're going to see that because most of the people are like, well, it's not socialism when our guy does it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I know, it's so true. I we think, had Rich Paul about, on a... Yeah, uh, oh yeah, Rich Paul. Yeah, the, uh, the free stater from New Hampshire who has defected to Michigan because he knows how great it is here. No, he, he lived in New Hampshire. He, he was no, just no, he, for visit. He keeps coming here, though. Because he has family here. He, yeah. he, keeps come, he keeps coming here to Michigan because of the MPLC. I don't want to down somebody who's not here, but he said yeah, that the Rich, reason... Rich, we know you're defecting. We, is this, we love you. We, it's, you're it's, we're, we're, okay, you're, Rich, you're we know you're defecting. <laughs> we know that you want to be in Michigan. You're just trying to find a way to let the other free staters know. That's why you just keep coming all. back every couple months for... <laughs> Family visits, so <laughs> so you know we'll, we'll be your lifeboat. We'll keep you know helping you out with these excuses until you can find a way to make a clean break. But he made and, the argument that he would support a certain politician because that person would be more likely to allow New Hampshire to secede from the union. And I that's my whole point about politics is it's, everybody that. is has an agenda. Yeah. So as long as you're going to use rulers to rule over other people to support your agenda, that's just that's that's the crux of the problem. Not well, not using rulers to forward your agenda. Well, rulers don't stay rulers by allowing more freedom. I it, it it's kind of like uh, kind of like squeezing the inflated balloon. You might get a little bit more freedom in one area because you squeeze the balloon balloon and that area gets smaller. But the air inside that balloon has to go somewhere. So it always winds up expanding over on the other side. And quite frankly, if, if, uh, if a politician would allow New Hampshire to secede, and they're not going to do that because they don't want to they don't want to shrink the size of their thiefdoms, uh, that, that's, that's not freedom, that's permission. And that's, that's what political activists want. They want permission. They don't really want to be free. They want to have permission to do these little things or, they're they're not ready to abolish something that's absolutely horrible. It's a slippery slope. They just they just want to reform it. So like with Rand Paul, he's 
he's the only one that's talking about criminal justice reform, or reform of the criminal justice system, whatever. Okay, well, what you're looking at today is over 220 years of criminal justice reforms, and the constant need for reform, as Leonard Reed, or not Leonard Reed, uh, the other guy, uh, was it Spooner? No, no, no. He, he's alive. Uh, Lawrence, Lawrence Reed? Lawrence Reed. Yeah, yeah Lawrence Reed says, uh, the, the constant need for reform is is proof that the state has got it wrong the first 50 times that they tried it. So, I'm... Can I swear on your show? Yeah, yeah we fuck, no. yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Don't fucking swear on our yeah. show. <laughs> all, all this reform nonsense is just a, trying to find a new recipe to make a shit sandwich. The same shit sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a question for you, Lou. Um, you're obviously trying to spread the message of freedom, being mm-hmm. on the Freedom Fiends. How how do you see us getting from where we are now to where you want to be free? Well, what we really have to look at, and, and ultimately, with, with your question as well, what was your what was your path to anarchy? And ultimately, what the, the one thing that we share in common, it might be a little bit different with Beth, it was food freedom. With Scott, it was uh, being a, a mini-statist. Mm-hmm. And with Mike, was it was, he got bored one day. And, no, so. I've, I've been a mini-statist <laughs> yeah. for yeah, but, but since the, the 80s. But, but the one thing that we all have in common is that we realize that the state, the religion that legitimizes the existence of governments and the several states, is a losing proposition that there that it cannot be anything or that a loser it cannot be something kind warm loving and benevolent because it can only exist through theft and violence yeah it's a criminal organization yeah. at its core yeah and it, it doesn't matter if the local mafia boss gives free turkeys out to the poor people of his territory on thanksgiving right He's still the mafia boss. He's still doing a protection racket. He's still engaging in you know all all the other stuff, you know the the violence and the theft and things like yeah. that. Now, if he's just, if he's supplying drugs and hookers, then hey, good for him. You know that's that's a government created industry. But do you have a path? What do you think the path to freedom is going to be? Do the, you think there is one? Okay. Well, the, I mean, the path to freedom is ultimately in, in what we share uh, with everybody who's become an anarchist or somebody who went from apathetic complete status down to uh, constitutional many status but they just haven't gotten around to reading that constitution yet because you know too long did it read it's kind of like an end user license agreement just click accept and you know, <laughs> I, I, I looked at the one section that looked okay I clicked it to accept, and I figure somebody else read it, and if there's something really bad, then you know, whatever. But anyway, that, that's what Constitution Humphreys do, is they don't read the Constitution, they swear it's, you know, they swear everything is like the Bill of Rights, and it's the opposite. But ultimately, when enough people get fed up, when they, like us, see the state as a losing proposition, that's when they decide that they have to look for something else. Uh, it, it, it's like, uh, it's like somebody with drug or alcohol problems. When they hit their bottom and they know that they have to stop drinking, that they have to go into recovery. And there's a difference between stopping drinking or stopping drug use and actually going into recovery. Because the recovery is a process of becoming whole again. Whereas the stop, stopping the, the usage is just abstinence. So recovery is getting your mind right, getting your body right. Uh, getting your spirit right, if you believe in those things, is more than just the stopping. It's becoming who you were, and in many cases, becoming who you want to be, separate from who you were before you started with the substance. So I think when, when people have eliminated the possibility of getting just the right guy in there and following the Constitution to bring everything in line, I think that's when people will start seeing that option. And I think with you know shows like the Freedom Fiends and Free Talk Live, because uh, I, I know Free Talk Live, they don't talk a heck of a lot about, well, you got to get behind this candidate, and you got to do this, that, and the other thing. Or the Anarchy Roundtable. <laughs> yeah, or yeah. Anarchy Roundtable. We've, we've kind the, of become I'm, more overt with Anarchy yeah. Roundtable. <laughs> yeah, and the, the Freedom Fiends, I, we never advocate using the political means. Never. 
you might get that every once in a while on Free Talk Live when they're talking about New Hampshire stuff, mm -hmm. but you won't get that on, on the Fiends. Period. So, I, I think once people realize that it is necessary to use, let's say, the economic means, the cooperative means, and to abandon the political means, meaning the coercive and robbery means, then I'd I think pe I think you're going to have a major shift. I don't know what that percentage is that is necessary to tip the tip the balance you know, to yeah. get the non-compliance or the non-participation. I don't know what the specific event will be that would be the catalyst for that sort of change. But, but basically, it's Chancellor a, Trump. I think it's the an catalyst. education. <laughs> but basically, it's an educational process, is what you're saying, and that's what I I think. Yeah. I believe, and I. Well, it also has to be a, a certain amount of frustration that people have yeah. to feel with the government. It, which... It's a, it, it's a very self-educating process. Yeah. Because it, it, it's like with sales. If if I'm an insurance agent, I'm telling you how much you need life insurance. That doesn't mean do we squat. It's when you look at your life and like let's say you wanna you got a wife and kids that you wanna take care of, make sure that they're provided for, make sure that. Uh, the mortgage will be paid off if something happened to you, maybe some grandkids, something like that, and you start thinking, wow, I need life insurance. It's not important when I say it. It doesn't mean anything when I say it. When you say it, that's when it becomes important because you realize that you have that need and it's going to mean something for you to do that. So I, I think when people realize that abandoning the state is going to be their survival mechanism, that's what's going to provide them the most happiness, that is when you're going to really start to see the tables turn. And th th there's a, a meme on the internet, and I just absolutely love it. It's a, it's like a wreath shaped in an A and for the anarchy symbol. It says, because governments keep fucking up. It, and if, if you just look at the yeah. utilitarian argument for it, there's no reason to keep government around. If you look at the moral point of it, there's absolutely no reason to keep it around. It so when I think, I think when people really get smacked in the face with reality, that's when it's going to change, and that's when they're going to get off the stupid stuff. Do you guys see a path to freedom? Do you see? A, do you think it's through education, or I don't think any of us want to. Like I, don't, I don't have a plan. I don't know a plan, but I, I don't have a lot of confidence. Do you have in, a path? I know how to get there, but I know that I I really feel like understanding uh, what human needs are is the path that will have to be followed. For instance, we've all gone through a pretty radical philosophical transcendence. Yeah. And most people have not. And what I don't hear a lot of in the liberty movement is focused talk about exactly what the difference is internally between people that make their way through that transcendence and people that do not. And the people that do not make it through that transcendence what is necessary for them to come along? What needs to happen to bring them along? That what I what hear a lot of is is bashing of them and yeah. bashing of the state. So that's kind of where I was going when I was um, responding to your path to anarchy. Was where is it? Where is the government hurting you? And yeah. you know, we could show people how. Their yeah, own you life could be better. Appeal. Yeah, how if, if how you would your life menace. be better? Yeah, if this was not in your way. But you yeah. do, when, and we've all been through this. You do run into these other things, like, okay, maybe my life would be better if these regulations didn't interfere with what I want to do. But the government helped me, or at least my yeah, perception is they helped this, me greatly yeah. in this area. They provide protection. I like the police because they keep me safe on the road. So then what happens is... Yeah, sure, they molested me, but they paid my way through college. <laughs> exactly. Like people have this perception yeah. that it was helpful in these other ways. Their, their tentacles are so intertwined with everybody's life that it's hard to imagine yes. a life without the government. And I don't mind sitting there going, all right, so you were helped in this way. Let's say that, that it wasn't done that way. Force wasn't used to take money, you know, to help you go to college or whatever it was, whatever way your protection on the road or whatever it is, how could that happen in a different way? I mean, I'll, I'll have that discussion, but it can go on forever. And you get the, the whack-a-mole situation where, well, how are you going to do roads? Well, it could happen like this. Well, how are you going to do police? It could happen like this. And what's happening is that person 
has some sort of need they're trying to meet by rejecting every single but thing. But what happens, and I've done, the, I talked to Beth about this a little while ago, is this has been a really great area of interest to me is confirmation bias. Basically, when you're talking to someone like that, their mind is made up already, mm-hmm. and they are just arguing with you. They're not. They're not sitting there logically going back and forth and say, "Well, yeah, you're right." Very yeah, so rarely maybe there's, does that happen. Maybe their arguments are coming from a place of emotional distress. Emotional they feel dis- uncomfortable about what you're telling them. Yes, so of course. And yes, the arguments do. are coming from there. That's why logic yes. keeps going out the window, and we're like, "No, you can't use that." You know, I heard this. I heard this um, quote nature, somewhere. Um, somebody said, "The housing market can't crash because." It would wipe out the banking system. Which is true. No, it's it, it, it would extent. but they the the logic there is no logic in that statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The logic like, is, oh that can't happen because the logic it could be is horrible. the bankers what they're saying. The world and they're not gonna let that happen, which is No, what they're saying is it can't happen because it would be horrible. Yeah. But that but what doesn't I'm mean saying it is that it's not like you, you mentioned before that it's human nature, you know, to present these arguments. And I, I think it is human nature given a particular human background. Right. Um, to, to, to hold a particular well, worldview when a worldview radically different comes to you to feel intensely uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And you'll see this different parts of the world, different cultures. You'll see this to the point where if your worldview is a little different, I just kill you. They just kill you. Yeah. Um, this is really common. It has been throughout history. So what, why is one person in that camp and another person is like, tell me, I, I want to hear about the new ideas. Yeah. Maybe this will be better for my life. Maybe it'll benefit me. You have the one person that's going, because they're, don't be too different to me or there's going to be trouble. And the other person that's like, what is the, the next thing, beneficial thing to my life I can well, learn? What we need to understand is why are those two people different and, and what are the elements that make up one person's ver- person versus another? I think... Um, like what Beth was saying, she was into, you know, the government fucking with the food and stuff. And, you know, we all have our little things that really bothered us about the government. And that allowed us with our own confirmation biases, which we all have. That's how we, we don't have time to sit there and logically think about everything that comes at us. So we basically, when a person, a human hears something, they generally make a snap decision whether that falls into it or whether they want to listen to it. So if you say, yeah, well, you know, look at the way they're doing your food. That's fucked up. That, let me tell you something else. You might listen to it. But if you say something, most of the things that we would think are going to just be totally off the wall to people. So, and that's, so you can't just, just totally, like, like I say, and plant seeds of free thought with them. You can't just totally throw something at somebody because they're going to argue with you. Their mind won't even allow them to think about it. So you're saying so. draw them in with something that they're interested yeah, in. Yeah, something that they're already something, yeah, experiencing yeah. that they can there, there's something relate want, to. Right. There's something I want to touch on because I am going to have to get out of here in a little while, but yeah. a nice long drive. I appreciate uh, you staying so long. We can talk about what how we got to anarchy. But what I want to really talk about is what I found since I got here. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. The the big the big thing about it is right down over there, darn hippies. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 thing that I have found since I came since I became an anarchist, uh, one you're looking at the at the libertarian moral philosophy of the zero aggression principle, leaving our people alone. Uh, I remember there was a, a ballot, I think back in the 90s or something like that, a long time ago, and uh, it was talking about a constitutional amendment to ban gay marriage here in Michigan. I voted against it, and I felt rather libertarian, so to speak, or very liberty-oriented because I was voting against a ban on something. Later on, I realized that a libertarian wouldn't be voting on somebody's marriage one way or another, but... If I look at things that that bother me, for example, uh, let's say somebody somebody smokes pot. I'm not a pothead. I, I haven't smoked pot since the '80s, since the Reagan years. Because Would I you don't just smoke. Say no? What's that? Did you just say no to drugs? Just say nah. <laughs> he, said, he said meh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I never really cared Sorry. for. It. But but here's the thing: there are people out there that do. Now, granted, if I buy into the into the propaganda of how, you know, 
injecting the pots is going to make you do all sorts of violent stuff. And I think people should be thrown in jail because they're injecting the pots. Hey, my hippie. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, it's just because I don't do it doesn't mean that I have to hate other people that do it. I, I don't think it's a particularly great thing to do. You know, that's why I don't do it. But I, that doesn't mean that somebody's bad because they do it. You know, that's their choice. So I guess the big thing about being an anarchist is not getting butt hurt over people doing stuff differently than me, mm -hmm. letting them live their own lives. Yes. So by doing that, by releasing the anger that I used to have as a statist to where if I saw somebody doing something I didn't like, I'd be like, you rat son of a bitch, I'm, I'm, I'm going to vote at you in November. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll deal with your ass. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw my bell in that box and you're going to get screwed. And... I, that's how I was, but by letting go of that anger, letting go of that hatred, letting go of the, the dark side of statism, it really helped me out. Now, what I've also found, and particularly because of this group, is not just having that, that void of the anger being gone, but replacing it with the love and the friendship mm -hmm. that we get. And as an example, I showed up here Friday night, and I got a warm welcome except for from everybody except for Scott, who says, holy cow, you're early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were, I was going to do a meme on loot time and yeah. sure before I could find a picture of you. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, look for Hey, when I die, I'm going to have them wheel my ashes into my funeral 30 minutes into the ceremony <laughs> just, so, just so everybody believes it's me. <laughs> No, I, actually, I'm not going. No, but seriously, I, I I come to these things, and even when I was living downstate, and we get together for a movie night or yeah. to go get dinner, it's greetings with hugs, it's saying goodbye with hugs, it's you know, hey, how have you been? You it's know. not being able to quit talking. It's like, yeah. you know, you just had to walk away. Just walk away. You know, I, 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 I saw you just a week ago. And we chatted on on a text message or something like that. But hey, what's going on? How are you doing? Yeah. You know? Hey, you were you were gonna you know go try for that job somewhere? How, how's that going for you? You know, I just all these different things. It's it's a great deal of concern for one another. It's wanting the other person to be happy. Um, something else I've seen out of uh, the vast majority of anarchists is the peaceful parenting. Yes, you know, like Paul's son Jackson, you know, they they use a peaceful parenting on him, and he's a good kid. Yeah. He's a little mush. What's that? He's flush. <laughs> yeah. Better watch out what for him that? next year. He's getting tougher. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've stopped smoking, you know, so his I, ass is grass. But, but, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> when, when you, I think you're you, the one that tapped out on that little snow wrestle. Well, that's, we because, <laughs> that's because you and his father jumped on me, too. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, when you look at the, the, the peaceful mm -hmm. parenting and then also the, the way that People treat each other and their relationships, you know, their romantic relationships. Mm. Instead of having arguments where you're trying to win the argument, it's trying to come up with a peaceful resolution because why would you want to beat your partner? Why would you want to beat your own teammate, yeah. so to speak? Mm -hmm. And when, when you really get that philosophy, because I mean, there's a lot of people out there that they'll argue with their husband or wife and, and they want to win the argument. They want to beat their own partner. In that regard, yeah. it's a sad and dynamic, the win lose. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I believe in a win win. Win win yeah. is really. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier and, too. It's and like powerful when you when you're. Sometimes you might have to do something that you don't want to do. You know, I use the example of maybe Scott couldn't pick up the dog, and you had something better to do, and you wanted to do, but you couldn't do it. But that might be an issue where okay, I'll go and do it, even though. But but generally, it's best to do things that you. You can both win, you know, maybe compromise a little, but compromise in a way that makes both of you happy in, in any type of relationship. So mm -hmm. well, win. Something else, I was hoping to bring a date down here for this, but scheduling just didn't work out. Uh, she is, she's an she? anarchist. <laughs> 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 Don't worry, I'm not muscling you on your action. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> By the way, good to see you back in men's clothing. <laughs> sort of. Uh, she's been to one anarchist meetup, so she's never really uh, been exposed to a group like this. This would have been great oh, yeah. for her. Yeah, and so when, when she sees something like this, because I, you just look at the meals. You, know, you post a little something on Facebook. Okay, let's do this, that, and the other thing. And it's, it's like, I don't know, steel underpants... Question marks for stage two, but stage three meal appears and it's kind of <laughs> happens. It's like last night for dinner, you got leg of lamb, you got chicken, you got fresh vegetables, I mean, all these different things. I and mean, it just kind of falls together. Same yeah, we, we've actually taken the planning out of um, meals. I know Lynn was getting a little frustrated with that. And I said, yeah. Lynn, you're she's never going to plan it. You're never going to yeah. be able to plan it. We've <laughs> tried this before. Yeah, she's a commissar. I just bring <laughs> random food to yeah. these, these gatherings yeah. and it always works out. I, I kind of I, I, I kind of want to be like, now I'm just going to like bring a piece of paper. And this is in the fridge. Eat it. And like post it up there. And be like, Let's go. While we look at breakfast, uh, we know that there's going to be several pounds of bacon here. Yeah. Which is why I bring sausage. Yeah. Better. We, we, we know that I'm going to make some sort of sausage hash one day. Yeah. Because you know, I mean, that's like my trademark item. Uh-huh. And there's going to be other stuff. You yeah. know, like Lynn made the uh, stuffed French toast. Beth had her egg bake with the with the spinach and rutabaga and cheese and all sorts of good stuff. By the way, I'm taking some home for breakfast. A, a certain Perfect. spontaneous order yeah. has emerged yeah. in our food planning. It has. And, yeah. and, and it, it's actually so beautiful to watch because it all pops up a sep- separate time so you got you know practice bacon along with first breakfast second breakfast third breakfast so it's, we're, we're like a bunch of little hobbits here <laughs> but i mean, just the the whole the whole way that things go and just the whole environment here it's it's really energizing and it's because it is full of love and and respect for each other and trust and i mean, for example i lost my tablet last night I didn't consider that it could be stolen. I just figured that Paul's wife moved it somewhere. <laughs> she's, always, she's always putting stuff away even yeah. when you're using it. She does do that. She yeah. does put stuff oh, away. Yeah. Where did that go? <laughs> I, I love your wife. Lynn is awesome, but... Uh, when yeah, she's just, like, head. grabbing stuff out of your hands while you're in the kitchen. <laughs> I, when, when, your, when your coffee cup gets filled from the core egg and she takes it out of the machine, pours it out, and throws it in the dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's put, a step you missed there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the part where I consume it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she, just, she just starts grabbing. But, but I no, seriously, I, I didn't consider oh, that it could have been grabby. picked up yeah. or, or stolen. You know, I figured I left it somewhere, or Lynn put it away somewhere, because that's what she does. She, like, hangs clothes up while you're wearing them, and <laughs> takes your plate as you're eating. And <laughs> she, she she eats makes your bed while you're laying in it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I know she's not even here to defend herself. I know. <laughs> it's much better to well, pick on someone than I'm smart enough to say right. it <laughs> because, you know... She's not dumb enough to pick on her yeah. face. <laughs> yeah. So, I... am I, I think I think in a situation like that, when people see how how this place, you know, how how our little dynamic works, I can't see people not, not wanting recording? to. I can't see people not wanting to have that for oh, no, themselves. Oh no, no, no! You can see it. Oh. I mean, it's it, it's kind of like a cult without all the Kool Aid and ritual suicide. No Kool Aid. And nobody nobody forcing people to stay. How warm are you, Joe? I'm fine. On that note. Cold seat, yeah. I'm, I'm I was going to say, we need to get going. We need to hit the road. All right. <laughs> so being, I'm no longer being forced to stay. <laughs> hey, uh, we really appreciate you guys staying. We're here with um, with Paul, Lynn Jackson, and Sophie. Um, I just want to thank you guys for having the Winterfest for the third time at your home in the Great White North uh, near Traverse City. Um, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> All right. It's a wrap. Yes. Lynn, Lynn, Lynn you said that uh, you're you know, You said you're a voluntarist and not an anarchist. Could you? Uh, uh, you prefer to use the term uh, voluntarist. I, I prefer. I think voluntarist is a a much more um, inviting term to use. Yeah, much less confrontational term, and I'm I I prefer to use that most of the time. But I'm also an anarchist, so well. Could you explain yourself, please? So, I like voluntarist because it 
doesn't create the picture that anarchist does. And, you know, it also invites conversation because people don't know what voluntarist is. It certainly does. And yeah. so I prefer that very much because I associate with the non-aggression principle, less violence and coercion. And when people hear anarchists, they're more standoffish and they yeah. think of violence and coercion. Think of the so, of what it stands right, for. right, right, right. So, I do prefer uh, to say voluntarist. I often do that too. I don't just come out. Sometimes I do, but often, more often than not, I just say, you know, I believe all human interaction should be voluntary. And not too many people can disagree with that, although surprisingly some can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, and even with saying that, I don't know if it comes across as with the coercion and force. Um, when you say interaction should be voluntary, I feel like people can think, <laughs> of course they should be voluntary. <laughs> <laughs> This is a household with freedom. And our dog is free to do as she pleases. We will well, not interrupt her. Well, she doesn't do any of the guests. <laughs> so, anyhow, that's that's my view. I mean, I can start with that voluntary interactions, but that doesn't really convey the whole non-aggression principle either. I think yeah, it depends on how long things. your conversation is with someone. I went on a date with a girl once, and my name, it was from a meetup.com group, and my name in the group was Joe Voluntarius. And so the first thing we she did on the date is ask me, what is that? And I just gave her the definition of voluntarist is, is, is that I believe that all human interaction should be voluntary. And we talked about that for 20 minutes before it dawned on her that everything the state does is involuntary and that it would have to go away. So we explored this 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 idea, this concept. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna break something. Uh, the world is crumbling. Hey, <laughs> it <laughs> uh, and it, it did really make for an interesting conversation. We talked about peaceful parenting before we got to the state. That's kind of related to what we said a little while ago. Yeah. It's like you can't just throw everything at somebody all at once. That's why it's a good thing to open with. I believe all peace, all human interaction should be voluntary. Sure. Because it's hard for people to to have a confirmation bias against such a, a a statement that seems pretty obvious to most people. Sure. Now you got to know your audience. Sometimes I throw the A word out there, just depending on who I'm talking to. Yeah, there are definitely times to throw it out there. But I'm interrupting you. What's no. your story, Paul? Oh. Well, My no. story? <laughs> story? I've already told it many times. But, um, <laughs> I haven't heard it. I've, no, I've told it on the show, like pieces of it. You've told Paul's story on the show? Oh, yeah. I said my story, Joe. Oh. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and I should go back and watch one of these. <laughs> I have told my story. Paul. What's your story, Paul? It's a short story, not as long as you guys. Is, right. <laughs> hey, is it over? Want to talk about something else now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's the story, the end. Here's the story. No, really, I, I come from a the... man named Paul. I guess what most people consider the right... Um, I've always considered myself to be somebody who's engaged and like wanting to listen to conversation all the time. So excellent listener. I have got like twenty years of talk radio. You know, that's just kind of what I always gravitated towards was talk radio. So as much as I hate to admit it, I was a Limbaugh sycophant for like twenty years. Mm. Levin, Hannity, all those I like them. All those radio, guys that too. I seem to be D bags now. You know, that's what I listen to, that's where I came from. And my brother uh kind of tuned me into Free Talk Live about four years ago, something like that, and it was just like a switch went off. Like, like I felt the switch went off when I started listening to those guys. Like, this makes so much sense. But so many more pieces of the puzzle fit in now, now that now that my philosophy has the, uh, basically the backing of the non-aggression principle. And if you can go back to a foundational philosophy that you build all your beliefs on, then you've got something. But I never had that with conservatism. It just kind of, mm, they kind of change with the wind. Or around. Well, like, this week we're pro-war, this week we're anti-war, just depending on if there's a D the in front of the president's name or an R. You know, it's just, there was nothing really concrete. And this, this just seemed really concrete. Yeah, the right and left kind of are movable 
sure. they're very flexible. It's depending on whatever uh, they think will work or something. I don't know. It's, it's bull poop. <laughs> we don't cuss on this show when Jackson's here. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's... <laughs> Jackson, <laughs> that's a bunch of shit. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Do you get a mic he can drop when he goes around? Yeah. <laughs> Jackson, what's your story, Jackson? Um, How do you stand on all this? You've been you've been exposed to a lot of different views with all of us coming up. Yeah, here. just How always do you like all this physical abuse getting. Thrown <laughs> <laughs> I've personally, thrown you in the lake about two hundred times. I think. <laughs> Jackson has the brunt of loose. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, a little bit of mic. Yeah, I, I usually only throw them in the lake. I don't throw them in any snow bank. I did. You, you darn kids. Him and I were backing you up yesterday. When, you were, no, I, when he was fighting Lou, I stuffed about 50 pounds of snow down his... <laughs> oh, <God>. his head. <laughs> oh. He did it. What? Oh, I was stuffing Lou's pants with snow. <laughs> I was with you. Yeah, when I was done, I could hardly walk. I couldn't <laughs> feel anything. This is how statism works, son. <laughs> <laughs> Get the man I did Very it for large your own man good. is going to come down on you. <laughs> I, I did it for your own good because I care. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was for my own good to get all that Life stuff down there. <laughs> all right, so, I think we'll wrap it up there unless um, any of you guys have any um, outgoing message you'd like or is it you said everything you'd like to say i, you want to, I guess you want to say part of Jackson? how how i thought about this ideas was i would always hear his shows and stuff you know he's okay. just play his podcast and stuff out out on the radio so that was a big part of it yeah, cool hearing all that stuff so what, what we're saying is that we have a successful program of breeding our way to anarchy. <laughs> yeah. Not really. They only have one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, right. This one. is kind of like uh, a <laughs> shrinking oh. population. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going to work. You guys are going to have to have about 15 more to make this work. No, I mean, I, in, in all seriousness, though, by exposing people to the truth when they're young, instead of having them completely brainwashed by the state is, I think, a very healthy thing to do. And, and that's something that you guys have done a great job with. Well, thanks. And we do try to let him develop yeah. his own ideas and have his own questions. But uh, And he does ask when we're in the car, and yeah. we try to do our best. You treat him like a person. Yeah. Amen to that. Instead of like a subject. Instead of the way I treat you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Although. <laughs> there is one more thing that we oh. should probably get out of the way. All right, what have we got? I'm just really curious. <laughs> What's so good about that? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> 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 It's mediocre at best. So I don't know why you're always going after that. <laughs> the fire's yeah, crazy. Like this is just the guy. Really appreciate you guys being here, guys. That was the longest five minutes ever. I know. <laughs>
the big man. You got another one. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, that was a little, I was like, oh shit, this might be dangerous. Oh, God. You darn kids. So this is why Lou says it has to be an annual deal. Yeah. Why? Because he thinks it's so much fun. There's a giraffe! Oh, draft. Why did you become an anarchist? <laughs>